Hi everyone, this is Hardy. In this lecture, we will take a look at shape language. Shape language is the use of geometric shape elements in artwork to achieve a desired visual impression. So basically, if we know how certain shapes communicate certain ideas, we can use shape language to make our viewers feel a certain way about our artwork. This can be incredibly useful in character, creature, and machine design. Let's stick with three primary shapes for our discussion, circle, square, and triangle. Each of these shapes can be associated with certain attributes. Circles seem friendly and approachable. They are non-threatening and trustworthy. There are no sharp edges, and everything has an easy, smooth curve to it. Circles can also imply feminine. Squares are dependable, stable, and solid. They seem static and sturdy or even boring. Squares can also imply masculine. Triangles are aggressive, dangerous, or threatening. The sharp edges imply both motion and speed. Let's take a look at some sketches that make heavy use of each of these primary shapes. For each shape, let's take a look at a cartoony face, a machine, and an animal. First, let's take a look at a sketch of a very circular human face. Now these are exaggerated, but you can see how almost every element of the face is based on a circle. It gives him a very friendly, non-threatening quality. It also reminds us of a round baby's face, which almost everyone will associate with harmlessness. For a circular vehicle, let's check out the Volkswagen Beetle. It is perhaps the most circle-heavy design ever for a car, and it certainly seems friendly and harmless. Just about every element of the design is a circle or a curved line. For our circular animal, let's check out this hedgehog. Now this one is a bit of a contradiction, but I included it because I wanted you to see how powerful the visual effect of the circle can be. This animal is covered in spikes. By all logic, we should be afraid of it or repulsed by it, but almost everyone who sees one of these things wants to pick it up and give it a hug. They're just adorable to us, practically solely because they're just one big circle. Their entire body shape, their eyes, ears, nose, all circles. And our trust of circular shapes will make us pick up something that will probably poke our hands. Next, let's take a look at some square designs. I've sketched a very square human face. This guy seems very sturdy, masculine, and perhaps dependable. He's also quite static. There is no movement and nothing much going on with him. Predictable and even boring, but enjoyable nonetheless. Next, let's check out this semi-truck. It is designed almost entirely out of squares and rectangles. It seems very heavy and utilitarian. A dependable and sturdy machine that performs an important but unglamorous task. For our square animal, let's take a look at a cow. Now this sketch is an exaggeration, but it really captures the essence of a cow. It is heavy, slow, and somewhat boring. It's sturdy and dependable, but again, performing an unglamorous task. Finally, let's examine some triangular designs. This triangle-based cartoon face shows how the aggressive, pointy sides of a triangle can make a face seem dangerous, evil, and villainous. You can find heavy use of triangles in almost every Disney villain. For our triangular vehicle, let's take a look at this fighter jet. Everything about this machine screams fast, aggressive, and dangerous. Triangular shapes imply movement and sharpness, and this machine really communicates both. Triangles are very useful when you're designing a machine or a creature that needs to look deadly, sleek, and fast. Take a look at this shark, for example. It is composed almost entirely of triangles. Its nose, fins, and most importantly, teeth are all triangle-shaped. We are hardwired to recognize pointy shapes like teeth or blades as a potential danger. So remember that whenever you're designing something that needs to be scary or dangerous. Now that we've discussed each shape in some detail, let me show you a few pieces of my own artwork that have made heavy use of these shapes. Some of the shape language is a bit more subtle than others, but it's there if you know where to look. As a bit of homework, start trying to see shape language in some of the artwork or images that you see in media or advertisements. It can be really eye-opening and a valuable exercise to a character artist.